Our minds can be like a bird in the sky, trying to find a... Wait, this is the wrong damn script. Where's the real one? Well, in the meantime, you can watch this. Step out of my way. This cannot end well. So if you watched the first video, you'll have a deeper understanding of what it means to be close-minded. But is open-mindedness in the end really that good? I've spent a few days looking at this topic, and I've come to understand that it's not really that simple as letting the whole universe inside of you. Because first of all, it's not really possible to be truly open-minded. Well, maybe unless you meditate your whole life and you use something like psilocybin. But in any case, open-mindedness. The best way I would describe it, the ability to consider that you're wrong, willing to reconsider, and actually willing to listen to other opinions, because you realize your perspective is one of many in this objective world we can't really grasp, because we only see it with our minds and our senses. If we start with the same thing as in the previous video, we can see that our tiny brains can work just a little better when you're open to new ideas. There are studies that show MRI activity in the brain actually increasing in the default network. If I'm not mistaken, open people are 50% more likely to distinguish fake news from real news. Think about that. And this study that I mentioned in the previous video has found that open people use higher diction words, tend to see the big picture, are more tolerant, are against inequality, whereas closed-minded people tend to talk about themselves their immediate surroundings, it's happening now. Oh, and another cool thing is that open people actually have less followers, but more likes. Now, all of this may sound cool and close-mindedness might, might seem kind of bad, but nothing's ever that simple. I'll talk about that a little later. First, let's explore what other benefits there are for considering alternative ideas. It seems to be correlated with creativity and the higher IQ which in turn means higher intelligence, although there aren't really many true creative people. It seems to be associated with success in life, with life satisfaction, having better, healthier relationships, having a much healthier physical and mental health, and it does seem kind of nice to understand both sides of an argument. And a really cool thing I read about was that some open-minded people might actually literally perceive the world differently. They put two different colors in front of each eye, and open-minded people could actually merge those colors. But if you want to know a little bit more, here's a list of other things about open-mindedness. Now the fun part. Why is it a double-edged sword? If you consider the fact that an open mind lets everything in, that means you can be really gullible. You take any and all information that comes your way, which can actually lead to more dogmatism in the end. And politically, people seem to agree with neutral standing politicians, which again is taking a stance. Well, you can still be completely open-minded if you just want to be a hippie, which is technically an ideology in itself, or you just want to be in some la-la land with LSD. Basically, blind faith rarely goes well. Unless you want to get into one of those cults. And the weird thing is that a lot of people get biased by the alternative ideas to the point where anything normal is bad and wrong. And then you see a rebellious nature in people. One of the sayings I always live by is eat the meat and spit out the bones. Or don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Alternatives and pseudoscience can be great but it's not necessarily true. And the same goes for our cu culture and our cultural, our cu cultural, our cultural, damn, I cannot speak today, norms <laughs> and other accepted ideas. But a really dumb thing our, our culture does is actually look at open-mindedness as being something dumb and not to be 
sought after to the highest degree. Those people are seen as weird, crazy, sometimes even dangerous. They can be sometimes because open-minded people tend to because they tend to push dangerous boundaries. And for the sake of time, again, if you want to know a little bit more, here's a list of other things that open-minded people should look out for. So what now? We've established that neither are without fault. What is the best course of action? Acceptance doesn't mean agreement. Someone's not necessarily wrong, but they're not necessarily right. Eat the meat and spit out the bones. Having an open mind doesn't mean you let go of your values, your feelings, and your standards. I think you get where I'm going with this. It seems the best way, as always, is somewhere in the middle ground. Maybe more towards the open-mindedness. But it does seem that we do need some kind of filter. I like how somebody compared it to three types of cups. One being completely open, one being closed with a lid, and then the middle ground. For people to listen to you, you have to meet them where they are. But it doesn't mean you have to stay there. Take what you need and leave. And I understand that it's actually not easy to find the right balance in this. But I like how one successful businessman actually put this. Take an idea and take it for a spin. If it works, then you keep it. If it doesn't, then go on to the next thing. But there doesn't really seem to be a better way to grow this skill, apart from trying things and failing. Now I could make a giant list of how to do this, but if anyone cares I'll make a part 3 with how to be correctly open-minded and how to be more open-minded. But I'll leave you with this. Train your awareness of yourself. Be more mindful. If need be, meditate. But try and understand how little you really know. Be completely honest to yourself about who you are, your ideas, and your beliefs. Thanks for watching.